thank you for tuning in at this webinar. Uh, it's our goal to share as much valuable information in the upcoming half an hour on the subject of how we handle limited floor space challenges over here at LAN Handling. My name is Dino Boat. I've been with LAN now for two years and I'm the sales engineer. Together with me today is my colleague Marcel Maas. Hello, welcome. I'm working uh, 40 years now in robotics and I'm joining LAN Handling for 16 years. So uh, welcome for the webinar today, and I hope uh, I can learn you about how we deal with this topic. All right. First, Marcel will start uh, with uh, explaining you more about our dolly crate loading system, the system which is specifically suitable to handle products packed in bags and nets. Afterwards, I will share more knowledge about case packing and in specific the solutions to handle skin packs, trays and flow packed products. During the whole webinar, you are able to ask questions in the question box, um, which will be answered uh, during the, the whole webinar. So Marcel, uh, it's up to you. Yeah, so the first topic um, I will uh, talk, tell you about is about uh, dolly and crate loading. Um, many of our customers who pack potatoes, onions and other products load them into the big boxes, the more volume, but also in crate, uh, small crate and boxes. And especially for this topic, we designed um, a new system. And I will tell you why our system is better as others uh, did until today. The basic de design principles we use for uh, this type of uh, automation, small footprint, because the volume and the, the space in factories is always an issue. We know gentle handling of the product is important. So we try to be the potatoes, not to drop them from one meter, but gently, nicely put them in the packs. We want to go for high capacity because that's what our customers are asking to us. We like most simple solutions because the more simple, the better, the more reliable, optimal access for cleaning, high flexibility, so easy also to change to other packing formats and easy to operate so everybody can work with our systems. So we, for this webinar, we use a general topic. We use the next production data. We load into 600 uh, by 400 crates full size, but also 400 by 300 half size crates. We say we want to load also in 800, 600 BDUs, the large volume boxes, plastic and also cardboard. And we say for this case, we have a machine who makes 75 bags per minute of so two kilo potatoes. We put eight bags in the crate and a standard normally about 100 bags in a BDU. Right, Marcel, I got a question. I see a picture over here from, uh, from crates. Yes. And I know from my experience that we have a lot of different crates on the market. Yes. So we have many different suppliers uh, of known, uh, so let's say IFCO and for example, Europool. Dino. Is this system only for one type of crates? Or? It's, a, it's a very good question, Dino, because um, we go, our system can do all type of crates, bail arm crates, foldable crates, fixed crates, but also the reinforced cardboard boxes. So that's every nice. package normally we can use in our system. So that's really a big benefit for a user. That sounds good. So. To start, um, you know, um, looking in the market, I show you three basic principles um, how customers or suppliers do that today. And from that base, we see, we make clear how we deal with our solution. And, and I show you the big benefits, how we do it. So the first principle is you see quite often a robot in the middle getting the crates to it, you can pick the product. And on one side, we have the big dollies on a chain. So the customer can put in four empty bullets in space, then the empty dolly moves to a loading position, will be loaded, and afterwards he can complete four full dollies um, ready to take away. And also on the other side, the robot can load crates with the same footprint. The good thing is a quite big buffer, mm -hmm. so yep. you don't have to be so often at the line. Um, but one of the negative points is you need a buffer, and I will explain you later why that is really not so good. Also, the footprint is quite large because you have a large line, and also the loading position is complicated because 
it enters, it needs to close, you have vibration in it, it needs to go out, but also it's on the chain. So that is quite complicated and in that case also maybe less reliable. So we also in our system try to make a change on that. What do you mean with it's complicated because it's on a chain? Yeah, because you you want to vibrate the, the big dolly, so it, it's already, uh, you want to put it on a big table to vibrate, but then the chain is then in the way, because yeah, you cannot lift a complete chain, so it's not so easy to do that good. And hmm. vibration is used because? Yeah, vibration is uh, because um, if you load the bags and you vibrate in, in sometimes in the middle, it will make get more to closer together and you can get more products into your BDU. Optimum filling of the BDU, so to say. Yes, it is. All right. So one of the things uh, we just uh, told you is um, because when the BDU is completed and it needs to move, you have some moving time. The doors need to open, the BDU needs to go out, the empty BDU needs to go in, the door close, and then you can load again. So in this case, um, we use about eight seconds uh, that the robot cannot load. So if you have eight, 80 seconds to complete the BDU, mm -hmm. you have another eight seconds that the robot has to wait because he cannot load. In this same time, the bags still come on, so you need a buffer, and that, that, that's a problem. Because with the 80 bags, eight, 80 and 80 seconds, we have 75 bags per minute because of the buffer, the a capacity drops down, in this case, to 68 bags per minute. So that's 10% less. But also, to buffer the bags, you need about 3 meter line lengths, and that's not so good for your floor space. So two Sounds not legit. so good things about the buffering. No. Another solution, more complicated, I've seen in the market, just a rotary table. One side, the operator can load and then take away the full MBDU, add it an empty BDU, the table will rotate. It's a small footprint, but similar problems regarding the buffering. So also here the capacity drops from 75 to 70 bags per minute, and that's not so good. And I also think if I look at this and you will rotate dollies, it would be hard to integrate some kind of vibration system also, again to get the optimum yeah, filling of the, the BDUs. Agreed. It's also not so good in this, in this case. There were some suppliers who said, okay, we want to get rid of the buffering. So what we do, we install two rotary tables and then the problem is solved. So the good thing here is the capacity will stay as it is. So the robot can do 75 bags per minute, the system also. That is good because you have the high capacity. Yeah. The bad thing is the footprint is quite, quite large. And also if you load crates in this system, the robot may have a large movement. So the capacity for crates will slightly drop. So the land solution, how do what we do? So looking at the solution we just had, we make some rules. First thing, we don't want any buffer because it will drop down the capacity. It needs to be compact because that's one of the goals we always want to do. Yeah. So what we do, we load, load two BDOs in one go. So the operator doesn't go have too often to the line. We want to have a most simple loading position. Capacity needs, needs to be high and even better, we can load two crates at the same time. So for crate loading, we have really a high capacity. All right. And then I've got another question because we say the capacity needs to be high, but it could also be that maybe some clients require a certain capacity, but not the highest possible. How will we solve it? Yeah, we, we, so we can have, make our system flexible. We can load two crates at the same time or one crate, so it's depending on the cost, but we can do basically all. All right. So we designed this and really uh, compact, as you can see on, on the picture. So we have two dollies left, two dollies right. And the nice thing of our system is if the robot is working left, the, the other, operator the other, can do the things on the other side. Yes, yeah, so he can take out the, the full dollies, put into new empty ones, and he can accept the system to load. So while the robot is then finished on the left, he can go directly to the right. So no stop, no buffer, always full capacity. And to have an optimal crate loading, we put the robot, the crate loading system above one of the BDUs. And how we do it, when we 
change I can show you on the video. So what we do, you can see the crate loading is finished. We open the crate loading conveyor automatically. Push of a button. Uh, no, no, automatic because the robot knows you want to you want to stop crate loading. You want to go to BDU loading. All right. And the next thing you need to do, of course, we have another crate, and automatically the robot knows. Okay, I don't have the crate gripper. I need the BDU loading gripper, and it goes on like so here. It's also a smart solution. Smart solution, easy, easy to handle. Yeah. So also for the operators. So how you see in 3D, our solution really compact, no buffer required. We can load two BDUs left and right, optimal crate and BDU cycle, and a simple BDU although, because it's just a box with a vibration table on the, on the knees in a fixed position. Now the, the benefits. Looking at principle one, you've seen before, I made an estimation of the required needed for footprint uh, for this solution. 31 meter line lengths, 18.7 meter wide, also because of the additional buffer you need, the three meters. So it will require for two lines about 580 square meters. All right, if I look at this picture, Marcel, I see two robots, so the, the green ones, but yep. I also see in the more red area over there, I see another one. That's the pelletizing robot. So this system is complete. Two lines, crate loading or BDU loading, including pelletizing. Another negative point about this is basically also the interfere. If you want an operator will go, need to go in the middle, you need to have a long, a long run to get there because the system is closed from the front. So if somebody would use this system, they need to have very fit operators. Absolutely. On, on Nikes. That would be the best. <laughs> <laughs> now the land solution, two lines, compact, open from all sides. We need about 10.4 meters by 19 meters. And the pelletizing we do normally in a separate pelletizing upper area, 10.7 by 6.5 meters. In total, 276 square meters. And, and why would you place the pelletizer in another area? Because we could also place it next to this system, I we think. Could, we could do, it's also a possibility, but you see in many factories, the pelletizing is normally in a separate area also then they can easily go to the uh, load the trucks or so you mean less less pellet transportation less pellet movements on the factory floor yeah everything is concentrated Agreed. in one area it is all right yeah makes sense the result and that's basically what we go for the land system saving 54 percent floor space and the land system 10 percent higher output so what should i tell more and this is really a small video how we do it. You can see the robot is working on the left side. And if he's ready there, on the right side, the boxes are already ready for loading. So he can go on. If I look at this and the operator would come in to get to take away the full BDUs. Yes. Uh, would we have a safety issue here? Because yeah, the robot could easily get to the operator. Agreed, agreed. So you don't see it here. But if the robot is ready on the left side, right side, excuse me, the upper, there's an inside metal fence going up, closing the area. So full safety all the time. Uh, so we did a small software trick in the machine over here to get the, to get a nice video shot for the machine. No, this is just in, in this video, the operator already loaded the BDUs on the left uh, side. Give clearance, so the safety fence already drops down. Uh, yeah. And that gives the robot the option to go directly to the other side. Thank you. Yes. Very clear. So thank you for this part of the video. Do you know now we'll zoom in more on case packing and um, you know, go ahead. Let me see if I can do it as good as you did. Thank you, Marcel. So yeah, I will try to explain more about our case packing solutions. And then in this specific case, the solutions that are able to handle skin pack trays and flow packs. So these are products usually ready meals or meat or meat substitutes are packed in products like this or in yeah packaging like this. I would like to highlight first the general case packing goals for our solution. And so the design philosophy, the most important one is try to get a, a full functioning system in as much floor space as possible. Because Marcel also mentioned floor space is something that's usually not available enough 
when we do automation. Agreed. It's always always a problem. It's always yeah, fitting it's always in between challenge. the lines. It's just the yeah. fact that humans usually need less floor space to do different tasks than an automation solution. Yeah. But also important is gentle handling of products. Marcel also mentioned it for the, the, the products packed in, in nets and bags. We want to make sure that they get to the crate or to the carrier cardboard box as, as nice as possible. Another important thing is we would like to be able to provide the market with autonomous solutions. So it's just to connect uh, a conveyor with carriers, connect a conveyor with products, and here we go. Full crates From come out start. and they can go to either a pelletizer or to a next uh, quality check. Yeah. Um, we've been making these uh, case packing solutions for roughly 20 years now, so we've learned a lot over these years. Proven uh, technology. Proven technology. And always getting better. Improving all the time. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. And also for the dolly crate loading, we would like our products to be easy operatable, so they should be easy to operate. Push yes. the button on the HMI to change the program, and with one simple click, you can change the gripper. But also some nice to always taxes on the HMI. If you do something wrong, the HMI show, yeah. wait, do the wrong thing. Yeah, so please. Also a lot of help. Make it good, make the screen green again, yeah. so you could, uh, could start running products. So I will show the different concepts of the case packers we have. First video is about our basic setup. So products come in, they go onto a separation conveyor, which can create more or less distance between packs. It goes to a start-stop conveyor, so we can stop a product if there are enough products on the pickup for the robot. And from there, the robot picks them up, places them into crates. This solution is usually uh, suitable to run capacities up to 60 packs a minute. So in many cases, 60 packs a minute is just not enough for clients to run their production. So we had to come up with another solution, which yeah. can do more. But if you would go up, it's, it's not that simple to just provide more packs to the robot because you would get uh, a jam into the infeed of the robot. So what we needed to do is take the amount of packs that needs to be picked up by the robot out of the flow of the infeed, pick them up, and while that's happening, we can already um, preformate the next set of products for the robot. So please have a look. Four products run in. Oh, great. That looks to the clever. Side. That looks clever. And while those are picked up by the robot, the nest products can already come in. It's nice because you also can see that the robot can put the boxes under, uh, under the edge. Yeah, Great. and you also see that, that two smaller boxes are loaded at the same time. Oh yeah, I see. Good solution from LAM. So Brilliant. optimized product flow Brilliant. to reach a higher capacity. Yeah, and this can run up to 80? Up to around 80, in some cases okay. even a little higher. Okay. But yeah, we also know that um, many suppliers of uh, meat producers, for example, we eat mm -hmm. a lot of minced meat. Yeah. Not only in Holland, but also all around the world. So production lines for minced meat are usually high capacity lines. Always, always. Driving. Always. They need yeah. to, to have a high output. Yeah. And those outputs can go as high as 120 packs a minute, sometimes even higher. Um, so we had to come up with a solution which can keep up with those high capacities. So what we do is we started pre-formating uh, more packs before they go to the robot. So what you see over here is, a, is our highest capacity case packer mm -hmm. with a, a collator before they get to a servo pusher. So a line of uh, a set of three or four products run into the collator. The flights of the collator push them to, uh, to the side yeah. so that the space is free for another set of packs to run in. Mm -hmm. After that, the stopper goes down, products run in mm -hmm. to the pickup position of the robot while the next products can run in already. Okay, so you mean, if I understand clearly, the, the formation is done here and at the next position the robot can pick the whole layer up yeah. and put it in the crate. Yeah. Then you can run really high capacity. Yeah, and as you yeah. say, it's the goal for the system to preformate a whole layer which goes into the crate right away, which is visible in this video. And also this is, robot is also ex, um, yeah, is fitted with uh, this flexible gripper, which I'll tell you more about later on. So as you can see over here, we pick up up to eight products or eight packs at one robot flight. Oh, different it can products. be cookies, yeah. flow packed, it can be um, beetroot in trays, it can be salmon in skin packs, you name it, we can handle it. And also you can see you can load in boxes, I see can crates, I see half size crates, yeah. I see half size boxes. 
All, five, in, all in one system? All in the same system. Great. Yeah. Brilliant. So not only good use of floor space, but also highly flexible. And yeah. I think that's also very important when you do automation, yeah. that you have a flexible system. And then you always have these interesting challenges, which just are a little different than the rest. So in some cases, you have big, have high volume products, which do not fit into a gripper with two or more, uh, but you still want to run a certain higher capacity. Uh, sometimes they need to be placed in a crate under an angle, uh, and you have to do single pick. And sometimes the packages are just so big that they only fit two under the robot, but you still need to reach that capacity up to 120. And what we do is we add a second robot and to the system. Clever. Yeah. So they they both load 50% of the crate. Yeah. So it correct. At the end, the crate is completed. Yeah. And so even when you do a pick of two, for example or you have a very difficult loading pattern, then you can still maintain uh, quite a high capacity. Uh, in some cases, we have to be very creative and design a specific uh, gripper for the situation. But that's also a challenge we can handle over here at yeah. Low Handling. And as mentioned before already, uh, another important aspect of the case packer is the gripper. Uh, in general, we have two types of grippers. One is a fixed gripper. So this uh, gripper just picks up two, three, or four products in a row places them into the crate. Yeah. Um, especially when we uh, look at the collator cell, these are in many cases fitted with a flex gripper. So we pick up products and some products are rotated in the air during the robot flight to make sure they fit as a whole layer into the crate. That looks great because then you pick them up and in the flight you change them in another format. So you yeah. don't lose any capacity, but still yeah. you can load them in the pattern you want. Correct. So you have to look very careful. I made a slow motion video of the case packer you've seen before. Yeah. And if you look closely, you see when the products are picked up by the robot, which he does in two sets, because otherwise the, the gripper won't fit into the pickup area. Uh, during the robot flight, two products will be rotated uh, in another position to make sure the whole layer fits into the crate. So the robot goes to the products, picks up the first line, relocates slightly to pick up the second line and then during the flight rotates the gripper and also two outer corners and keeps doing this tri trick until the crate is filled. Oh, and if you look carefully, you can see the, the second layer is rotated 180 degrees to yeah. have a good loading. Yeah, to have an uh, optimized filling of the, of the crates. Okay, that's yeah. good. So, as you might know, at Lan Handling, we do automation by the use of robots. Yes. And then what you could say is you can also use the Delta robot instead of the articulated robots we have shown you in the videos. We have did trials with it, and based on these trials, we've decided to stick with the articulated robot. Because, well, why, why? Because it looks so easy, the other robot. Just pick one product at a time and... Very fast. Yeah, the, the, the Delta robots can run up to 60 to 80 flights yeah. in a minute. What's, and, what's um, the problem with that? Imagine that you have these well-marinated uh, chicken in a, in a map tray, yeah. you pick it up with uh, like 60 or maybe 80 movements a minute. What do you think would happen with the chicken within the map tray? Oh, uh, it will move. And maybe the film will break. The film could break. That's what we've seen happening with the easy peel on, for example, ready meals. Or the marination of the marinade is all over the, the map tray. And usually the, the clients of the supermarkets would like to have this well presented in the map tray and the map tray should be uh, clean. So really you're telling the Delta robot is not always the best solution. No, in, in, in some cases, or in many cases, mm. we think the articulated robot is still the best. Okay, explain. So, I made a small comparison, not only on capacity, but also focused on floor space. Uh, and on the left, you see the general footprint of the land handling case packer. Standard, eh? So always, yeah. always the same dimension for yeah. all the types. For all the, the like configurations compact. we've shown in the presentation before. Okay. I say, if you would run up to, let's say, 45 picks a minute, and usually, um, a Delta picker can pick one product at a time. Yeah. You could reach capacities, let's say, up to 45 packs a minute. Okay. Uh, and in this case, it might even be interesting to, to think about uh, a Delta picker because the floor space, as you can see, is a little smaller than our case packing solution. But 45 packs a minute is something we don't see often anymore in the market. Yeah. Automation usually requires higher capacities. Yeah. So if you want to go to a higher capacity with Delta picker, the only logical uh, option is to add another delta picker. And adding another delta picker would also mean almost double the floor space required. 
for this system. Yeah. So that's what you see over here. The length is already increasing compared to our case packer and the width is also, let's say, a couple of hundred millimeters wider. And then you're able to reach up to 90 packs a minute. As I said before, uh, many of the meat producing lines uh, require capacities up to 120 packs a minute. Uh, if you would uh, achieve that capacity with a delta picking solution, then you would need up to three robots in one system. And as you can see, that becomes quite a large system compared to our fairly yeah, small I see. Almost, and nicely optimized system. Almost four meters, so uh, normally yeah. it will not fit in the production line. So length is mm. almost double compared to our, yeah. uh, our okay. preferred case packing solution. So in general, less scalable within the same footprint, yeah. I would say. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we don't have to improve our articulated case packing solution anymore. Because I think you always need to be able to serve clients with the best solution yeah, possible. Yeah, you do, of course. Yeah. So, um, what I would like to ask all the viewers to do is uh, look at this video and think of a way how you could improve the current design of our case packer. You think mean? about it. If you have a suggestion, type it in the type box and, and let us know. We would be in, it would be interesting to learn what your thoughts are. Um, what I would do right now is to share how we thought we could improve it. And that's by redesigning the framework. Oh, and it looks really lower. Yeah, that's e correct. Better access for the electrical cabinets. Yeah, yeah. as you can see, we, we moved the, the electrical cabinets from the top uh, to one of the corners of the system above the collator because we still had a lot of empty space over there. And now the cabinets are easily uh, accessible for operators. Instead of they need a ladder or something, they might just need a step and then they can just work in the electrical cabinet. Another pro is that you will not be the first client that needs to change the structurals of his building to gain, yeah, to make sure the case packers can reach the production floor. Oh, that's good because I know two factories that you have to cut out some parts in the walls to get the system yeah, in. Correct. And now they just can run it in without any changes. They should easily, more easily fit to uh, doors. Not the normal door, but the, the roll change. doors. Good yeah. change. Yeah. And then I, like I think it. overall it looks much better. It's just a sleeker design, in yeah. my opinion. And uh, I think the last point I would like to highlight is be because the entrance or the, the reach to the, to the robot for an operator is not symmetrical, but asymmetrical, it's easier to change the grippers. I, I see another benefit you didn't mention, because the vacuum system is normally on top can be quite noisy. Now they built it in inside. Yeah. So it's closed. Yeah, it's it's hidden now over here and, and more easily accessible. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Great. So that was it for now. I can imagine you have questions. Maybe they are already answered using the, the function in the in this on the screen. But uh, if you need anything else or you want to discuss the subject with us, let us know. Our uh, contact details are are in the presentation.